before I okay. hit on, because sometimes I go live, it doesn't show the Okay. Hmm. Okay, let me move this out the way. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry. That's okay. Every, yeah, every time I do that, it comes up with a bomb screen. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You ready? Good morning to everyone and praise the Lord. Uh, to God be the glory for the great things he continues to do. We praise God this morning for our worship service. And certainly we thank God for those that are on the conference line, uh, Zoom and Facebook. Certainly we appreciate you today. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And he said, let us rejoice and be glad in it. And David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And certainly we are glad to be here this morning. We know that God is good and all the time he is worthy to be praised. I heard somebody said, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself with all the blessings that the Lord God has stored upon me. Suddenly we just thank God. And again, we give God the praise for everyone that have just been a part of this beautiful service throughout the two years and certainly we are so thankful and we are so grateful. Let us continue to pray one for another. Suddenly we thank God for uh, our Sunday school on today and how God is yet continuously blessing. And we just asking everyone to let us stay focused because God has great things in store for us. We'd like to take a moment and thank those that have been given in their tithes and their offering. Certainly we appreciate that. We cannot do it without you all. And certainly we just want to thank you for your giving. we like to continue to say that if you desire to continue to give, you can give through three ways. One is through www.newsaintmark.org or the user of the Givelify, or simply you can drop it in the UPS Postal Service at 3905 Springdale Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21207. And again, we thank God for your tithes. We thank God for your offering. And certainly we thank God down through the years for all of your participation. Let us continue to uh, pray one for another. Let's remember the sick, those that are sick. Let us keep them in prayer. Thank God for the ones that God have healed and have brought back, amen, to us in worship. Certainly we thank God. Nobody can do it like the Lord can do it. And certainly we praise God for all his many blessings. Let us remember those that are in the nursing home and those that are incarcerated. Let us remember them in our prayers, amen, because the word said we ought to pray one for another, amen. And so we certainly thank God again. And let me take a minute and thank God 
for down through the couple of weeks we've been having various of different pastors have been bringing the word and i tell you we have been feeding off of god's word abundantly and certainly we want to take this time to thank all the pastors that have been participating amen over these past couple weeks thank you god bless you and certainly we thank god for you at this time we're going to prepare our hearts amen for prayer this morning and as we begin to prepare our hearts amen let us focus amen on this morning some stand in the need of prayer some stand in the need of healing some stand in the need of deliverance some just stand in the need of god amen and we just gonna go before god this morning amen because one thing about him you can call him up and you can tell him what you want and i heard somebody say he may not come when you want him to come but i declare i'm a witness he's always on time let us go before the throne at this time father we come to you just morning as humble as we know how mm -hmm. lord we want to take time to thank you because you've been so merciful you've been so good and lord you've been so kind father we say thank you this morning because we don't thank you enough and we don't give you the praise for all that you have done for us and father we asking you lord this morning that you forgive us for our sins and that you cleanse us from all righteousness god we come right now thanking you for our service today. Lord, we thank you, God, for your love and how you have allowed us to be on this line over two years. And God, we know that nobody get the honor, nobody get the glory, and nobody get the praise but you and you alone. Yes, yes. Lord, we thank you for the faithful few. Lord, we thank you for those that are on the conference line. We thank you for them. Lord, we thank you for those that are on the Zoom. And Lord, we thank you for those that are on Facebook. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for their dedication. Lord, we thank you for their faithfulness. Certainly, we thank you, oh God. And oh God, we asking you this morning, Lord, that you continue to bless our service. Lord, bless the music. Lord, bless the word. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, because after all, it's all done to the glory and the honor of you. Lord, we want to thank you because you woke us up this morning. Lord, we want to thank you because you have started us on our way. Lord, we want to thank you because through you we live, through you we move, through you we have all our being. And we thank you this morning. Father, we praise your holy name because you are worthy. worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, we just thank you. We love you this morning, Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you this morning. We thank you for how you have blessed us. We thank you for how you have healed us. We thank you for how you have delivered us through many situations. We thank you, oh God, for how you made ways out of no way and only you can do it and you alone. And Lord, we recognize this morning that it is you and we say thank you. Lord, continue to bless us, continue to strengthen us in our love for you. Continue to bless us to love one another. Continue to bless us to pray for one another. Continue to bless us to hold one another up. Yes. Oh God, continue to bless us to stand on your holy word. And after we have done all to stand, God help us to stand and help us to continue to stand. We thank you and we praise you because you're so good to us. And we love you this morning and we appreciate all that you have done. Lord, just let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our heart, Lord, let it be acceptable. 
Lord, and we asking you, God, before we end this prayer, God, remember our deacons. Remember our trustees. God, remember our lay members. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, remember the disciples, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you. And most of all, help us to stay focused on you. And God, we give your name the praise and glory. In Jesus' name and for his sake, let us all say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Our scripture uh, reading this morning will come from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 24 through 28. Mm -hmm. And it reads as followed. The Lord is my portion, mm -hmm. self my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait mm -hmm. for him to the souls that seek of him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is good. It is good for a man that he would bear the yoke in his youth. Verse twenty-eight. He sitteth alone and keep of silence because he has borne it upon him. May God add a blessing to the readers and the doers of his word. And before we go into our song, I want to give you a, a little bit of background on our speaker for this morning. Our speaker is none other than the Reverend Dr. Robert Richard Allen Turner. He is a millennial who is passionate about his calling to serve this present age by speaking truth to power. Mm -hmm. And by the following the word as printed, Isaiah chapter 61, to preach good tidings to the poor, heal the broken hearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open a prison to those who are bound. Dr. Turner is the pastor of the Empowerment Temple, AME in Baltimore, Maryland. It is my honor and my pleasure to present to some and to introduce to others none other than Dr. Turner, hear ye the word of the Lord after this selection. Praise the Lord. Uh, down through the years, the Lord been good to me.
Shake me, wake me in a midnight hour And I'll tell you everything I've seen I'm trying to tell you down through the years The Lord been good to me The Lord been good to me. heart a home blessed quietness holy yes. quietness holy. assurance in my soul <laughs> on the stormy sea speaking peace to me Yes, and yes. the billows cease to roll. Yes. Another one that you probably heard of Negro spiritual, they used to sing during slavery. Hush. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hush. Somebody oh. is calling my name. Hush. 
hush somebody is calling my my name oh hush hush somebody is calling my name oh my lord oh my lord oh my lord what shall i do sounds like jesus y'all didn't forgot it somebody yes calling my name oh it sounds like jesus somebody is calling my name oh my lord what shall i do yeah blessed quietness this sermon is the first in a series of speaks and through the next few series or rendition of this sermon series you will hear the different modalities in which God speaks. And the first today we are illustrating and illuminating is how God speaks through silence. Yes, yes. Now to the pragmatist that may sound oxymoronic, for when it is silence, how can one hear or how can something be spoken? Mm -hmm. But God and only God can speak in silence. Mm -hmm. I love the black church for several reasons and I admire her tenacity i admire her resilience i love the vivaciousness of the spirituality and the expressiveness of our liturgy but one of the flaws if you would in our experience is we are animus toward silence basically we hate silence in fact if there is a silent moment in worship somebody thinks somebody is doing something wrong right. amen if there's a silence longer than five seconds people looking around scrambling who ought be here who ought be there and i i grew up in the same tradition so i fall prey to that as well we see silence as the boogeyman we are afraid if we are silent too long we're gonna lose the energy we're going to see people fall asleep. Yes. Like they're not going to fall asleep anyway. But we, 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 we fail to understand that silence is most often the time. Let, and 
scrambling who ought be here, who ought be there. And I, I grew up in the same tradition, so I fall prey to that as well. We see silence as the boogeyman. We are afraid if we are silent too long, we're going to lose the energy. We're going to see people fall asleep like they're not going to fall asleep anyway. But we, 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 we fail to understand that silence is most often the time in which God speaks the clearest. God speaks in silence, through silence, to those of us who can be silent. And, and, and I think silence scares us because in silence, we tend to think that we are alone. Yes. Nobody wants to be alone. Yes, yes. If you know God, you will know even when you cannot hear God. Yes, sir. You can always feel God. Feel him. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And God's presence is felt yes. even in silence. Yes. Truth is found in silence, not in noise. No. If you don't hear God speaking, it does not mean God is not communicating. That's right. Amen. We are talking about a God. We are talking about a God that spoke the earth into existence. <laughs> and I promise you, I know the, the, the Genesis 1 in your Bible says and god said let there be light but i want you to know that god did not speak english i know that blows some of your mind but when god was creating the heavens and the earth and when god said let there be light those english words never came out of his mouth he didn't say the words let there be light it was communicated to the elements and they understood what he was saying because he created them and then light produced itself God doesn't speak English in creation he didn't speak Greek in creation he didn't even speak Hebrew in creation God speaks God and those who follow God and those who know God hear his voice even the elements and the atoms and the molecules and the hydrogen and the oxygen and the nitrogen they hear his voice in their language God speaks molecule language God speaks animal language God speaks water language God speaks to your cells in your body where you are sick and worn out and you say be healed God speaks to your cells and he speaks to your lungs he speaks to your your heart he speaks to your eyes they don't know English but they know God your mind doesn't know English but your mind knows God your heart doesn't know English but your heart knows God that's why when you about to go crazy you can just say help me Jesus and the Lord will translate that to wherever you need to go God speaks car language when you about to get in an accident and you say stop He speaks to your computer and your cell phone. God 
God speaks while you are silent. And sometimes you can't hear him because you don't know his language. Blessed quietness. So while you don't hear anything, Yes. Yeah, you ever had a dog whistle before? <laughs> yeah, when you blow it, you yes. don't hear anything. Mm -hmm. But guess who hears it? Mm -hmm. Dogs hear it. Yeah. God has the ability to put the hearing capacity of dogs of yours. Yes. God speaks to whales. Yeah. To the whale to go get Jonah. <laughs> and take him to Nineveh. Yes, sir. Blessed quietness. God creates in silence. Yes, yes. The Bible says in Genesis 1 and 2, and the earth, in the beginning, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face. Mama. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Before there was any written text, the Spirit of God was moving. The spirit of God was creating. Mm -hmm. And what God wants you to know today, as he spoke through David in Psalms 46 and verse 10, be still and know that I am God. There's mm -hmm. things going on in your life today that you don't understand, you can't comprehend, and, and, and you want to give up. God sent me today to tell somebody, be still and know that I am God. You think you can solve your problems? I know you are educated. You think you can buy off your problems? I know you have money. You think you can outlook your problems? I know you look good, but beloved, there are some things that money cannot buy for you. Uh, there are some things your education did not teach you. There are some things your good looks can't flirt you out of. Uh, you have to be still and know who is God, be quiet. Let God fight your battles. Let God speak for you. Who knows in here how many times trees grow, but trees grow in silence? Who knows in here how many flowers are growing right now, but flowers grow in silence? You going through puberty, your body didn't announce when it was growing. You went to sleep one night, woke up the next morning taller or wider. You grow in silence. Don't you understand, beloved, that, that poverty is loud, but wealth is silent. I'm going to say that again. Poverty is loud. When you don't have anything going on in your life, when you have a broke spirit, when you have a busted and disgusted mentality, you make all the noise in the world when you are in poverty I'm not talking about money I'm talking about in mind heart and in spirit those who are impoverished they make the most amount of noise but those who are wealthy I'm not talking about rich I'm talking about wealthy those who have been blessed with richness in spirit and riches in heart they don't have to brag about who they are they don't to broadcast what they have. They don't have to tell you what's in their bank account. When you have wealth, you are silent. Just like when you are in pain, you are loud. When you are in pain, oh, I hurt so bad. Oh, my leg hurt. Oh, my head hurt. Oh, you make me sick. Oh, you get on my nerves. When you are in pain, 
pain, you got to say it. You get loud. But when you are well, wellness is silent. When you feeling good, the only way folk know is if they ask you. When you look good and you know you look good, you ain't got to tell anybody. They say it to you. When you are well, well is silent. That's the problem with some of us who not used to having anything. We got to run our mouths and we still don't have but two dimes to rub together. But when you know what you have and know who you are, you can have a thousand in the bank and still be silent. And you ought to understand that greater is he that is in ye than he that's in the world. So even if you don't have what you think you ought to have, you got to understand somebody is inside of you. That the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. The silver is his. The gold is his. You belong to him. So you don't have to run around town bragging about yourself. You ain't got to post everything to Instagram or Facebook. That's some of your problems. God don't want to give you the blessing because the first thing you want to do is broadcast it for the world. But what God has for you is just for you. It's just for your eyes only. You ought to understand that some people need that, but you don't need all of that because when God gave you your blessing, it had your name on it. And when God blesses you, it's yours. And if you are thankful, you thank him. You ain't got to thank your media followers. You say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Some of you don't have the blessing that you want because the blesser knows all you're going to do is broadcast it to the whole world and make folk more envious of your blessing than the blesser. Y'all don't hear me today. You have to learn how to be silent. Blessed quietness. You are blessed in your quietness. You need to stop trying to brag and complain about your pain and understand that God loves a cheerful giver. And you will have more blessings than you will have enough room to receive it. If you but be still and know he is God in this in this in this scripture we see a few things and I'm, we see in lamentations uh, Jeremiah he is he, 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 he is speaking to us today Jeremiah mm -hmm. Yes. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet wrote the book of Lamentations and just in case you didn't know lamentation means crying he laments over E.T. he laments I'm sorry over his people and what is he saying Jeremiah says just in case you didn't know, the Lord is my portion. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, I, I tried, Sister Linda, but I just can't. I, I, I tried to do a sermon where I didn't talk about food. <laughs> Sister Linda, I tried. I really did. And thank you for this great book, too. It's helped me out a lot. I got a little distracted there. When, when you go to, go to eat, typically in the old traditional black church, when the pastor would go eat with the members, they would have the food prepared. I know because my mom used to be the one cooking for the pastor. And isn't it funny how God works? 
my mama would cook for the pastor like every Sunday. And my aunt, uncles and grandparents, my grandmother did too. And now I'm a pastor. So I know when, when, when you make a meal on Sunday and the pastor is coming, yeah. nobody eats <laughs> until the pastor gets there. And now I'm a seven, eight, nine year old child, Darnell. I just sat in this long church service. <laughs> we didn't have children's church when I was nine and ten. Y'all children were blessed. I had to sit, and we didn't have any tablets, we didn't have any cell phone. I had to sit That's and it. look That's and it. not fall asleep. Because mm -hmm. I sat in the amen corner next to my daddy, mm -hmm. all the other grown men in the church. So we had to wait, and I'm like, the food getting cold. They letting the door open every time the door opened, it seemed like the flies knew we were cooking food on Sunday. Flies running in, flying in, and pastor gets there. And when you know it, this man took the best part of the chicken. <laughs> he got the corner of the peach cobbler. <laughs> you know. He got the greens with the ham hock in it. So my sisters and I, we were left with just what whatever was left over. Because he had his portion. I'm going somewhere with this. He, he had his portion. And that was his. Even before he got there. His portion was carved out. My, my. Even before he arrived in the driveway, when my mother or grandmother made the dinner, yes. she set aside yes. a portion for the pastor. Yes. And now my mother, what she would do, she would cook for the pastor, definitely. But she would have a special plate. Cause she saw how I would always get left out. And my mother, she carved out my portion. Yeah, she did. She, 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 I didn't know it when I was going in line, Reverend Davis. I was, I was in the line. I was like, well, he got all the good stuff. He got all the good food. <laughs> and when I would go sit to my plate, I sit at the children's table. Cause see, we didn't sit with the adults. And we, I never sat with an adult until I became an adult. Mm -hmm. And at the children's table, my mother had in her aluminum foil, mm -hmm. my portion. Mm -hmm. And this text is telling us the Lord is my portion. Yes, sir. Meaning, meaning, meaning that what you need, mm. he has. What you want, he has. Because oh. the Lord is your portion. And when Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, in the midst of the poverty and 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 I mean depravity and hardship, when he could still see that, but say the Lord is my portion. You could take my money, you could take my family, you could take my house and my home, but the Lord is my portion. God never promised me an easy life. He never promised me the things you are taking away from me. All he promised me is that he would never leave me nor forsake me. And beloved, when you understand who is your portion, when you understand that the great shelf of humanity, when he was making a meal for Moses, making a meal for Abraham, and for David and for Isaac and for Solomon and Jeremiah. God called out a portion just for you. Moses didn't eat it all. Elijah
Elijah didn't eat it all. Abraham didn't eat it all. David didn't eat it all. Y'all don't hear me. Solomon didn't eat it all. And these were wealthy, successful people. Guess what? God still left a portion just for you. So when you think that you can't think anymore, God has left a portion for you. When you think there's nothing left for you in life, God still has a portion for you. The bank didn't foreclose at all. The divorce didn't take it all. Cancer treatment didn't remove it all. There still is a portion left for you. The surgery didn't take it all. The car note didn't take it all. The mortgage didn't take it all. There still is a portion left for you. And when you realize that God has given you a portion that he has set aside just for you, you can then say like Jeremiah in the following verse, therefore I hope in him. See, if you don't have your portion, if you don't know your portion is in God, then you won't have anything to hope for. What is hope? Hope is when you expect to get a favorable result despite all the evidence. Barack Obama wrote a book, The Audacity of Hope. When you can't see your way through, you still hope you're going to make it. Hope is a blessing from God, but you cannot have hope unless you know who has your portion. And your portion is had by God and waiting for you. So therefore, for you can hope in the Lord. You got bills due next month. You don't know how you're going to make it. You hope you will see it through because the Lord has your portion. You have medical problems right now and you don't know how you're going to be healed. Therefore, you hope that God has your healing because you know the Lord is your portion. And then once you know your portion, then you have your hope. That's when you can wait and seek. As the next part of Lamentation says, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Once you have your portion and you believe in your hope, then you just wait and seek and watch and wait and see what the Lord is going to do. How many can wait on the Lord? You have been sitting here. You've been trying all your life to make a difference. God says wait on me. Not just wait. How do you wait? You wait on me by seeking me. You don't just sit there like a knot on a log expecting something from nothing. You have to wait and seek at the same time. If I was just sitting in the kitchen looking for my plate but never went to my chair to receive my meal I'm waiting, but I'm not seeking. Y'all just miss it. Some of you, beloved, you are in the kitchen. You see the food. Everybody else is eating, but you're not seeking a plate. You're not seeking a seat. You need to go and sit down and expect to be served. You didn't invite yourself. You didn't build the kitchen. You didn't prepare the food, but you know the Lord is your portion, and he is your hope. So now you wait and seek. And then Lamentation says, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. I'm preaching this thing this morning. When you wait, it's not just about seeking, but it's about waiting quietly. Some of you, you in the kitchen, you see the food, you see what everybody else is eating. You are seeking a plate, but why are you sitting down? You complaining, saying everybody else is eating besides me. You complaining, these greens are burned, macaroni and cheese too crusty, chicken too fried. You trying to kill me. You waiting, all right, but you are complaining the whole time. God is saying, when you wait on him, shut your mouth, be quiet, and wait on him. You are not waiting on God, complaining to God. You are not waiting on God, fussing at God. That's some of our problem today. While we claim we wait, we really just fussing at God. 
God. Lord, you didn't forgot about me. Why you ain't hear my prayer? Why I don't have this? You are fussing at God. The Bible says I quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, wait quietly. God ain't finished with you. That's why doing slavery, we had to sing hush, hush. Somebody is calling my name. See, why are you talking? You ain't listening. Why are you listening? You shouldn't be talking. So if you're trying to listen to God, you ought to be quiet. You cannot hear and talk at the same time. You ought to hush while he's calling your name. Then the Bible says, it is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Say, bear the yoke. Some of you, while you are waiting, while you are seeking, while you are quiet, you complain about how heavy it is. What Jesus said, bear the yoke. He says, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy. There we go. And my burden is light. What is the yoke? The yoke sometimes is leaving a noisy situation. The book talks about we have to get to silence and sometimes go through solitude. And solitude is the place where we can find silence. You can't find silence in a juke joint because you're not in solitude. You can't find silence with your earbuds because you're not finding solitude. You can't find silence where clutter and clatter are all around you. Still he speaks, but you got to be quiet. And if you are quiet, but others around you are not quiet, you find your place of solitude. Back in the country, we called it a, a prayer closet. We said Jesus is my portion. And he writes down Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Jesus is your portion empowerment. Wait on him. Be silent and seek him. Go through the solitude. That's why David said, Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, trying to get some solitude. That's why Abraham. If you know what I'm talking about. And when he went to find solitude, he saw the ram in the bush. That's why Moses had to leave Egypt. And he sought solitude and found the burning bush. That's why Elijah, running from Jezebel, went to the brook, found solitude. That's why David, running from Saul, went to the wilderness, found solitude. That's why John the Baptist, eat locusts and honey, born through Elizabeth, went to the desert to find solitude. That's why Jesus, Mary's baby, after being baptized, left the city, went to the desert to find solitude. Where is your solitude? Where is your desert? Where is your place of peace? It's not on the telephone. It's not on the TV screen. It's not on your tablet or your laptop. Your solitude, the first place, is in your heart. Is your heart a place of solitude? In Moses' time, he didn't have an iPhone. In Abraham's time, he didn't have a tablet. What they had was their heart. And on the platform of your heart is where God speaks. If you don't believe me, God the Father speaks. Jesus, God the Son speaks. But the Holy Ghost is silent. The Holy Ghost speaks to us, through us, at our heart. And is your heart prepared to hear from the Holy Ghost? He is speaking to you, but not yelling at you. I'm going to say that again. He is speaking to you, but not yelling to you, because he wants to use you and speak through you. Are the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So before you speak, make sure your heart is right.
right. If your heart ain't right, you don't need to be speaking to me. If your mind ain't right, don't say a word to me. You just hush, hush. Somebody else is calling my name. I got some blessed quietness. In fact, some of the biggest blessings folks can give you is the silent treatment. Be silent to me. Don't speak to me. Walk by me. Don't call me. Don't text me. You are free in no space and time for me to hear from the Holy Ghost. I don't care what you got to say anyway. I want to know what Jesus says about my life. Your texts are distracted. Your calls are distracted. Your annoyance is distracted. Let me hear from Jesus. Leave me alone before I block your phone. I want to hear from Jesus. There are people in your life, the devil sins, not to build up, but to tear down, to distract you from where God is calling you to. Is there anybody here? You say, bless and quietness. Don't speak to me, baby, because the Holy Ghost ain't stopped. Jesus and I are on good terms. My mama, my daddy, the Bible says they may forsake me, but the Lord shall lift you up. Is there anybody here? You know of somebody that was quiet as he was led to slaughter. He was dumb like a lamb, like a sheep before slaughter. He never said a mumbling word. To defend himself. What's his name? His name is Jesus. You ain't got to respond to your critics nor your haters. Let haters hate. Let critics criticize. You are listening to the master plan of God. You are practicing. You are waiting for your opportunity for success. Jesus didn't respond to his critics. He took that cross. Oh, God, God is here. Take your cross. Take your yoke. Your enemies, your friends will betray you. But you keep on marching. You keep on carrying. Even if you die, you may stay dead on Friday night. Stay dead on Saturday. But how many know early Sunday morning you will get up with all power and speak for yourself. The Lord will speak for you. The Lord will vindicate you. Is there anybody here? You've been silent while others have been talking. You've been praying. You've been preparing. God wants you to know blessed quietness, holy quietness. What a joy that floods your soul on a storm seas. Peace speaks to me. And the billows, they cease to roll. When you start listening to God and stop your enemies, your billows cease to roll. When you stop listening to your haters and focus on God, your billows cease to roll. Do you know the Lord? Have you tried the Lord? Sometime in life, put your spiritual earpiece and listen to him. Be led by him. Walk with him. Trust in him. Believe in him. I know he'll do it for you. I know he'll fix it for you. He has your portion. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He has my portion, for the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He has my portion. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He has my portion. He got my cylindric mattress, my down feather pillows. He has my portion, my silk sheets. He has. My portion. He got my nightcap. He has my portion. Don't you know him? He will be there for you. He will walk with you. He will cover you. If you don't see me again, just remember the Lord is my portion. And if you miss me from sinking down here, you ain't finding 
thank God you're not my jury. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Say yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Certainly we thank, thank God. God. Thank God. Amen. I'm so overfilled this morning. We thank Lord. God for the word of God. Amen. Coming from Dr. Turner. What a word. What, what, a, word. Word. what, what a word. What a word. Amen. At this time, we're getting ready to Amen. give you the invitation. Amen. And if there's one amen that does not know jesus hallelujah in the pardon of your sins we're going to give you this opportunity amen to come amen we're not in the building amen but wherever you are whether it's in the living room whether it's in the dining room whether it's in the car, amen. wherever you are, amen. If you accept Jesus as your personal savior, I am a witness and I am a believer that he will come in and he will sup with you. Is there one on Facebook? Is there one on Zoom? Is there one on the conference line? Amen, we're giving you the invitation Amen to come. Amen in your heart. Amen. Like Dr. Turner said, amen. If you want your portion, amen, I can introduce you to this man called Jesus. Amen. And I declare this man, Jesus, will make it all right for you. Is there one this morning? Amen. While the blood is running warm in your veins, don't let it be said, amen, too late, too late but we're giving you the opportunity, amen, in your heart, that you open up your heart and open up your mind, amen, and get right with God. And I heard the song say, and do it now. Is there one this morning? Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father. Lord, we thank you thank for you. your word coming from Dr. Turner this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, talking about blessed quietness. Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you, God, because even in the midst of what we all going through, you have a proportion for each and every individual that's on this line, that's on the Zoom, that's on the Facebook today. And Father, we open up our hearts to you. And Lord, we want you to come in and we want you to sup with us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, oh God, we yes, thank Lord. you, oh God, for giving your son and how your son gave his life that we might all have a right to eternal life. These blessings we do ask in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. amen. Certainly we thank God for our service, amen. Uh, again, today, this morning, let us tune in, amen. If it be the Lord's will next Sunday, around this same time, amen, because God, has a word for you. Let us be dismissed. Now let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our heart, let it be acceptable in our sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus name and for his sake, let us all say amen, amen. until next Sunday. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May the heart be with you. May God be with you. God be with you. Yes, Lord. Shall we meet again? Oh, 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 be with you. Hey.
be with me. God be with you yes. till we meet. Yes. Oh, 